Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so this new topic that we are going to cover is an extension to your AS topic. It's called reaction kinetics. As you remember from your AS syllabus, reaction kinetics involve rates of reactions. Okay, so this is just the extension. Right, if this was a physical class, I would have asked you to plot this graph. Basically, this is a reaction um, where you can see the reactants turning into products. This reaction is called isomerization. You don't need to know that. Um, in the data, they give you the time taken for this reaction to happen. That's the first column. And then the concentration of cyclopropane, that is your reactants and the concentration of propene, which is your products. Okay, so what they want you to do is to plot a graph. And this is how the graph looks like, right? I hope you can see it. Now, um, some features to notice on this graph. This graph is called the concentration time graph for obvious reasons. Let me try to annotate, okay? Um, the reason for this is because Later on, you will see that there are a another type of graph, okay? Um, here you have concentration on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So it's quite obvious why it's called a concentration time graph. You are all familiar already with this concentration time graph. Um, this is a concentration time graph of products, okay, of a product. And this applies to any type of reactions. How do you know this? Because if you look at um, the features of this graph, okay, initially at zero, you have, when the time is zero, at the start of the experiment, you have zero concentration of products. Okay, you can't have zero concentration of reactants. So over time, the concentration increases. So this must tell you that it is. Um, the concentration of products. Oops, what did I do? Okay, anyway, so okay, we do undo, undo, change to mouse. Okay, sorry. So for the concentration time graph of a reactant, it would be the opposite. You would start from a certain amount and then it would decrease over time. Okay, so nothing, nothing new from there. The other thing that I want to f um, mention is rate of reaction. Okay, so this brings us to the introduction of this um, topic. Rate of reaction, as you know, well, some of you may know it as speed, the speed of the reaction, how fast the reaction is going or how vigorous the reaction is going. But the definition of rate of reaction, if you look at your notes, okay, on your notes it says the rate of a reaction is a measure of how fast the concentration of reactants fall or decreases, or how fast the concentration of products increases. Okay, so you can see that there are two factors here the fast, the speed, okay, that is. Uh, related to time, okay? How fast, how slow, that's talking about time. And then the concentration, okay? The amount of either your reactants or your products. So if you were to write this in mathematical equation, if I just show you the slide, okay? The rate of reaction is equals to change in concentration over time. I hope this is nothing new for you. Okay, um, I hope this is self-explanatory. So you can either write down the definition of rate of reaction in words or in mathematical equation, change in concentration over time. Okay, so we can actually find the rate of reaction from concentration time graph. Okay, how do we do that? Change in concentration. Notice that your y-axis is concentration over change in time. Your x-axis is time. 
So if you take the change of y axis over the change of x axis, this gives you the gradient of the graph. Okay, I hope that is obvious, right? So on to the next slide. You can see that this, um, I've got this uh, triangles on my graph. That is actually showing you how to calculate the rate of reaction. Okay, as I said, the rate of reaction is change in concentration over time. So you would take the gradient of a concentration time graph, but please make sure you only use a concentration time graph. Later on, you will see a rate over concentration graph. Okay, you can't use the gradient to find the rate, right? Um, I'll explain to you that graph later on. Okay, now why do we have different rates? I mean, why do we um, find the gradient at different times? Because as you know, over time, the rate of reaction decreases. Okay, from your AS syllabus, you know that initially the rate of reaction is the fastest. Reason for this is because you have a lot of reactants to begin with. So that's, the, that's when your reaction is fastest. And then over time, you have less and less reactants, so it starts slowing down. Now, how do we see that in terms of gradient? Now, I hope you know um, what it means by the slope, okay? When it is um, steep, that means it's high gradient. When it's gentle, it's um, low gradient, okay? So for example, um, let's see if I can do this. Right, so you can see that that is the gradient at the start of the reaction, the one that I've just drawn in blue. And then this is now the gradient after some time, okay? Specifically, that is the gradient at t equals to um, 26, 27, okay? Where that point is, okay? So you can see that the slope of the gradient, initially it's quite steep. That means high rate. And then as you proceed, the slope of the gradient becomes um, more gentle, okay? So it is not as steep. So here we said that the gradient is lower. So that means the rate is lower or slower, okay? So the rate is not constant for the reaction, right? So um, moving on, let me just clear this first, okay? So we'll talk about that graph again another time. So these are the graphs that you would use um, if we were to have physical class, okay? Now, this is another graph. You don't have this in your notes, don't worry. Um, always when you come across a graph, you have to really study the axis, okay? Understand what's on the axis. On the y-axis, you have concentration, and on the x-axis, you have time. But this time, the graph is different from the graph that I have shown you previously. This is because this is showing you the concentration time graph of a reactant, okay? Um, this is just a general reaction. Uh, I have just taken it from, a, from an example, okay? So how do you know it's a reactant? Because you start with some concentration of reactants, and then over time, the concentration decreases until eventually you either reach zero, that means all your concentration has been used up, or you will see that the concentration of your reactants going to a plateau, just a flat, flat line. That means the concentration is constant, okay? The reason why the concentration is constant is because the reaction has ended. It is not using up the reaction, reactants anymore, okay? Same thing if you were asked to draw the gradient given the concentration time graph of a reactant, you will do the same thing, okay? Sorry, if you are asked to find the rate, okay? Same thing, you will find the gradient at each particular time. So the question must specify, find the rate of the reaction at T equals to, say, 600 minutes, okay? So that's this um, triangle, right? When the question asks you, what is the initial rate of a reaction, okay? Initial means just after T equals to zero, 
Okay, as we all know, at t equals to zero, the reaction is not starting yet. Yes, logically, it's not starting yet. Initial means just after t is equals to zero. Okay, so how do we answer um, finding the initial rate of a reaction? We look at this first triangle, this one. Okay, this is how you find the gradient of the initial rate of reaction. They want you to find the rate at just after zero, okay? Not t equals to zero, because t equals to zero would mean that the rate is zero. The reaction has not happened yet, okay? So please just remember that, um, how to find, I keep losing my, my mouse, I can't see it, okay? Right, so uh, that's one way of finding the rate of reaction graphically. Okay, okay, moving on. Okay, so now this is um, something that you have in your notes, right? As I mentioned just now, rate is a measure of how fast the concentration of reactants fall or decrease, or how fast the concentration of products increases. So if you were to write this in mathematical form, it's change in concentration over time. So change in y-axis over change in x-axis that gives you the gradient of a concentration time graph. The units for rate of reaction will follow this expression, okay? Change in concentration, concentration is always in mole per dm cube, and the time can be second, minutes, hours, okay? So it depends on the question, but usually most of the time it's time in second, okay? So you may write this down on your notes. The unit for rate is small per dm cube per second. Okay. Um, I'm sure this is also nothing new for you. You are familiar with this already. Okay. So please write down the units. Okay. Moving on. So there's also a mole per dm cube per minute or mole per dm cube per hour. This all depends on the question. So please, that's why I say to read the graph carefully, read the axis. If the time is in seconds, you write it as mole per dm cube per second. If it's in minutes or hour, it would be otherwise. Okay, right, moving on. Okay, so these are the things that I've already explained to you earlier on, um, how you can find the rate um, of change of concentration is basically the slope or the gradient from your concentration time graph, okay? The gradient at the start, t equals to zero, will give you the initial rate of reaction, okay? So uh, please make sure you label that on your graph, on your notes, initial rate is just after t equals to zero. I hope you know how to draw gradients, okay? Gradients, you draw a straight line that just passes through that particular point, okay? The rate of reaction at any time equals the gradient of the graph at that time. Again, I've already explained this to you. The gradient decreases as the reaction proceeds, showing the rate is slowing down. Okay, so this was also mentioned. How can you see that the um, rate is decreasing or the gradient is decreasing? As you can see here, that's the first rate of reaction. Okay, and then that's the second one. And then that's the third one. I hope you can see my, my blue line. So you can see that first it is very steep and then it goes down, uh, it decreases, okay? So the, the gradient decreases as the reaction proceeds. The reason for this is something that you already know, right? Initially, the rate is fastest because of the higher frequency of collisions between reactants. Over time, rate of reaction slows down because there are now fewer reactants to collide. Okay, so that is Again, nothing new. So please copy this down. There is a point for you to write down on your notes. Okay. 
click. So can someone just signal um, okay in the group chat if you have done copying this down? And also, I just want to know that you got, um, you're you okay and you know you are listening. Just so you know, I've already started my class like 15 minutes ago and I have been talking. If you haven't hearing my voice, um, <laughs> then that means there's something wrong. Okay. Thank you, Nat, Safina, and Kai. Right, so I know that you guys are there. Good. Okay. Um, so that's the explanation to why the rate of reaction decreases over time. Okay. Moving on. Okay, so we know that the steeper the gradient of the graph is, the faster is the reaction. When the graph is horizontal, the gradient is zero. Okay. Gradient zero, rate is zero. If rate is zero, that means the reaction has stopped. Okay. The graph that is given to you on your notes is showing you the concentration time graph of a product. Okay. I hope you can differentiate it by now already. How the concentration time graph of product looks like and how the concentration time graph of reactant looks like. Okay. Now, so what I've been talking to you uh, for the last 15 to 20 minutes is basically nothing new. These are mostly things that you have, you should already know from your AS, okay? So now we're going to move on to your A2 syllabus, okay? So these are the learning objectives. You will come across rate equation, okay? So you need to explain and use the terms rate equation, order of reaction, rate constant. So these are all the features that you have in a rate equation. Okay, so um, I'll just talk about learning objective 8.1c first. Okay, right now we move on to the second page of your notes. So I will explain and use the terms that you have in the rate equation, okay? So rate, is, rate equation is equals to K, which is the rate constant, okay? So this rate constant is a constant that is, that stays constant um, when you don't change the temperature and also the activation energy, right? The units of K, I will talk about this later. The units of rate, as you know, is mole per dm cube per second. Okay, right. Um, and then you have your concentration of A. A could be a reactant or a product. Okay, times by, sorry, raised to the power of m. In this case, the m, oops, yep, the m is what we call the order of reaction, okay? So the order of reaction, you always have to refer it to a particular species, okay? For example, in this case, my concentration is M order with respect to A, okay? B is another species, another reactant that is in the reaction, again, raised to the power of n. n is the order of reaction with respect to b. Okay, so I know at the moment, like you may be asking what is order of reaction? That's what we're going to look at in the next slides, okay? Um, so to find the total order of reaction, you have to add m plus n, okay? So order of reaction can be zero, zero order, you will write it as zero. First order, you will write it as one. Second order, you will write it as two. Okay, now um, an, a note that I want you to take note of is this. I don't know what's happening here. Rate equation may or may not, I can't see it. So rate equation may or may not include all your reactants. It may include some of your reactants. It may include some of your products, 
none of your products. So it is not as quite straightforward as writing down equilibrium constants. If you still remember, equilibrium constants is the concentration of products to, their, to the power of their stoichiometry number over the concentration of reactants raised to the power of their stoichiometry numbers. Okay? For rate equation, it's different. Okay? So please take note that the order... Oh, what's happening here? Sorry. The order have nothing to do with the stoichiometry number, nothing to do with the mole ratio. They are worked out experimentally. So that means you need to get data, you need to get numbers from experiments. Okay? Right. What else have I not mentioned here? I think I've already mentioned everything from here. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so this is an example. Okay, of rate equation. So we look at the first reaction where we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with two moles of nitrogen monoxide to form two moles of water and uh, two, two moles of H2O gas, that's steam, and one mole of nitrogen gas. The rate equation for this reaction is K, your rate constant, okay? So we always know um, your rate constant. And then the concentration of hydrogen. So if you look at the equation, the hydrogen is your reactants, okay? The order, the power you see here, which you cannot see, but essentially it is one, okay? The power of, never mind. The power or the order of hydrogen in this case is 1. Why is that? Well, that's because um, that's the data that we gathered from experiments, okay? It has nothing to do with the mole ratio. Um, times by the concentration of nitrogen monoxide to the power of 2. So this tells you the order of nitrogen monoxide is 2. Okay, the total order of reaction for this um, reaction is three, one plus two. Okay, um, as you can see, you do not have products in this rate equation. Why? Again, uh, because the products do not affect the rate. Okay, now the rate equation tells you these are the species that affects your rate. For example, you increase hydrogen, your rate increases. You increase nitrogen monoxide, your rate also increases. But that two, the order of two, is a little bit tricky. Okay, I'll mention it to you briefly now. Increasing the rate, sorry, increasing the concentration of nitrogen monoxide will double your rate. Okay, so if you double the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, the rate will increase by four, quadruple. Okay, so um, that's a hint for you there later. Okay? Now looking at the second um, reaction, uh, where you have nitrogen monoxide reacting with carbon monoxide and oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. And the rate equation is rate equals to K, rate constant will always be there, okay, times by the concentration of NO. So if we look at NO, is this one, okay, and the order is two. Again, no relation between the order and the number of moles, and that's okay, that's fine. And notice that nitrogen monoxide is the only one that appears in the rate equation. So this means that changing the concentration of nitrogen monoxide will change your rate. As you increase nitrogen monoxide, your rate will also increase. Okay, but by double the amount. That's the number two. That's what number two means. So this means if you increase carbon monoxide, even though it is a reactant, your rate will not increase. Okay, same thing. If you increase the concentration of oxygen, your rate will not increase. Okay. 
Right. Um, so the total order of reaction for this equation or for this reaction is two. Okay. Last one, you have two nitrogen atoms to form nitrogen molecule. Rate is equals to K, rate constant, times by nitrogen to the power of two. That means the order is two. Okay, nitrogen atom, the order is two, times by the concentration of nitrogen molecule to the power of one. Okay, you don't see it, but that stands for one. Okay, now this is just, it happens to be a coincidence that the order of nitrogen atom is the same as the mole ratio, but there is no relationship. Okay, um, the total order of reaction for this reaction, the third one, the last one is three. Okay, two so for nitrogen and one for nitrogen molecule N2. Right, so we say that nitrogen molecule N2 is first order, nitrogen atom is second order. Okay, so what I want to emphasize to you is that there is no relationship between the rate equation and the chemical equation. Okay, explain and use the terms rate constants. Right, the K in your rate equation. Okay. Um, units of K depends on the overall order of reaction. It must be worked out from the rate equation. Value of K is independent of concentration and time. K, rate constant, is constant at a fixed temperature. So if you change concentration, the rate constant will not change. If you change the time, the rate constant will also not change. For as long as they are the same reactants, same conditions like temperature, the rate constant will be the same, even though you start with different amount. Okay, say experiment one, you start with uh, one mole per dm cube of reactant, and then experiment two, you start with five mole per dm cube of a reactant. So rate constant stays the same. However, if you start changing the temperature, then your rate constant um, changes in value. Okay, so the units for rate constant depends on the expression. How do you work out the rate of, um, uh, sorry, the unit of rate constant? You have to bring this, oh my God, sorry. Okay, so to find K, you have to bring this two or whatever you have onto the other side. Okay, that is how you work out the units of K. Remember, square bracket stands for mole per dm cube. So it depends on your order, the number that you raise the concentration to. Okay, so if this is, if M is one and B is one, so you have mole two dm to the power of minus six. Okay, remember, rate is mole per dm cube per second. And uh, you bring these two terms onto the left side and just cancel out whatever that can be canceled out. Okay, so um, it's not easy for me to uh, write down, but I hope you can work it out yourself. Okay, by just moving the terms onto the left side, remembering that each square bracket is a mole per dm cube. This is also a mole per dm cube. Rate is mole dm cube, mole per dm cube per second. So when you cancel things out, you should be able to work out the units for K. Okay, so here you don't necessarily have to memorize it. If you have a total order of reaction as one, your K would be second to the power of minus one. Uh, second order, it will be this. And third order, it will be the following. Now, it is better for you to work it out in the exam, okay? Just work it out how many brackets you have and then cancel out the mole per dm cube. And then whatever you have left, that's the units of K, okay? Right, explain and use the terms of order of reaction. Now, this is where, um, I'm going to explain what is this number, what is the power that we've been talking about, the number that you uh, put 
in the expression. It's called the order of reaction. Okay, order of reaction. You have to uh, refer it to a particular reactant or to a particular species. Okay, you don't just say, "Oh, the order of reaction is one or first order," with respect to who. Okay, you have to say the order of reaction is one with respect to reactant A. And the order of reaction is two, or you can say it is second order with respect to B. Okay, so order of reaction with respect to a particular reactant is the power to which the concentration of the reactant is raised in the rate equation. Okay, so basically that is just writing it down in words, right? M and N is the order of your reactions, okay? So it is the power to which the concentration is raised in the rate of reaction. So nothing fancy definition, okay? But working out the order of reaction is a different thing, okay? How do we work out if that particular reactant is zero order okay so the the common orders or the the ones that we are going to cover in your syllabus will be zero order first order and second order okay zero order means that the concentration of a has no effect on the rate of reaction now who is a in this case it's reactants okay uh, uh, a general reactant, reactant A. That means that if you increase A, it will not increase the rate of your reaction. No effect. Your rate of reaction stays the same. Now, this is a bit funny because if you remember from your AS syllabus, increasing the concentration of reactants can actually increases, can increase the rate of reaction, correct? A few factors that can increase your rate of reaction. Uh, surface area, uh, concentration, pressure, temperature, okay? So the second point, concentration. We said that if we increase the concentration of our reactants, the rate of reaction will increase, okay? Now in A2, you will learn that this is not true for all reactants. Some of it, yes, you increase the reactant, you start with a lot of reactant, the reactant, the reaction rate will be fast. But there will also be a reactant where you increase the concentration, the rate will still stay, stay the same, no effect, okay? So this is what we mean by zero order. The concentration of A has no effect on the rate of reaction. Okay, so uh, further explanation, if we double the concentration of A, the rate of reaction stays unchanged, right? So how do we write down zero order? It's just writing down the number zero. Rate equals to K times the concentration of A to the power of zero. Now, I hope you know that in maths, anything to the power of zero is equals to one, correct? Yes cannot answer me but I hope you are answering me. Um, so that means for a reaction that has zero order with respect to its reactant, the rate is equals to k, just that, because this term will be one. Okay, right, <clears throat> that's zero order. The next one is first order. First order, the rate is directly proportional to concentration of A. Directly proportional. That means if I double A, double the concentration of A, the rate will also double. Okay? If I increase the concentration of A by 6, the rate will also increase by 6. That's what directly proportional means. Okay? So if we double the concentration of A, the rate of reaction doubles. Same, directly proportional, that's what it means. If I increase concentration by 4, for example, the rate of reaction increases by 4 as well. So that's first order. Last one, second order, is the rate is proportional 
to the square of concentration of A. Now, square is 2, correct? If you see here, rate is equals to K times the concentration of A to the power of 2, which is your square. Okay, so what does it mean to be proportional to the square of concentration of A? For example, if we double the concentration of A, the rate of reaction increases by a factor of 4. Okay, why? Because, let me show you. Uh, so, concentration of A, oh my God, goes up by, you times it by 2. Okay, so that means the rate will go up by the square of 2, which is 4. Okay, now using a different number. Let's try a different number, okay? If I change the concentration of uh, A, if I increase it by, say, 6, okay, the rate will increase by square of 6 is 12. That's right, okay? So there is a difference between first order and second order, okay? If first order, you increase concentration by 2, rate will also go up by 2. This is what we mean by directly proportional. You increase 2, the other one also changes by 2. Proportional to the square of the concentration depends on how much you are increasing. If you increase it by 6, the rate goes up by 12. If you increase, hold on, sorry, <laughs> I can't math. The square of 6, 6 times 6 is 36, that's right, sorry. If I increase the concentration of 6, the rate will go up by uh, 12. Yeah. Okay, you get me. Right, so it all depends on um, the zero, first, and second order. Okay, so let me just complete this. If you increase the concentration by six, it will be the square of that concentration. So the rate increases by 36. So sorry about that. Okay, it's not by 12, it has to be the square. Okay, um, let's see what's next. I need to clear this. Okay, now this rate concentration graph will be for the next session. Okay, so we will find the order from the graphs, right? This one just now, I explained to you how to find the order based on uh, words in wordings okay so um, next session next lesson we will look at the concentration sorry rate concentration graph on how to find the order okay so that is all for today let me just uh, oops how do I stop